God came near to us. He is here with us. Good evening, and we welcome you all to Sambang Gabi. Before we proceed with our devotion, it's always nice to take a minute just to reflect on the goodness of our God. And if you happen to be tuning in for the first time, a big warm word for the world, welcome. Well, this is an amazing season for us to really reflect. Christmas is around the corner. And everybody has different imagery that comes into their mind when it comes to Christmas. Well, for some, it's the food, it's the gifts, it's the festivities in the air, it's about the party that's going on, it's about the gift sharing, it's, it's, it's about the Christmas carols. Or even when you go look out, you look at the, the lights on the streets, and the mall's been decked with amazing decor and the Christmas tree. It looks so fascinating, generally speaking. And in the Philippines, you and I know that we start the celebration much earlier, right in the month of September. But this year, it's been a bit different. We're going through one of the most toughest years that you and me might have ever faced in our lives. Yesterday alone, one of my friends who used to live in the Philippines called me up and said, Joe, How's the festivities in the air? Is it just like the normal? What's the theme of the lighting in Ayala? I was asked all these questions and I, it made me think about, in my own observation, things have been pretty low-key. The festivities are several notch down, the excitement levels are far more lower. Malls are open, but you could see that it's semi-full. Some establishments are closed. Christmas parties, I bet, it's going to happen a lot more virtually than physically. And many OFWs are supposed to come back home and spend time with the families are still stuck in their respective countries because of the lockdown. Overall, things, even though it's Christmas, it looks a bit gloomy. But for me, this is a beautiful time for evaluation and reflection, isn't it? This Christmas gives us perspectives that we might never would have. A pandemic has also some brighter sides. And one of the brighter sides of this pandemic is all about gaining perspectives. Because somehow, somewhere, the real reason of Christmas has been misunderstood by the people for all the glamour and the busyness and the gifting. It has somehow kind of got lost. But for you and me, Really, Christmas is not just about these things. Christmas is about the person of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came down from heaven 2,000 years ago and willingly went on to the cross of Calvary for the sake of your and mine sins. And he rose again on the third day and today he is placed at the right hand of the most high living God. Amen and amen. And that is our hope. Which leads me to the theme for this evening, which is hope. And the title of a message is Christ Jesus, our eternal hope. Amen. Christ Jesus, our eternal hope. And for that, we're going to read from Romans chapter 15, verses 12 and 13. And in another place, Isaiah said, The heir to David's throne will come, and he will rule over the Gentiles. They will place their hope on him. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you with completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope 
through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Let's take a moment to pray. Father, we thank you so much for this amazing, precious moments. As we bring things into perspective, as we evaluate, would you help us to understand the real meaning of Christmas, oh God? Would you help us to be anchor our faith, our trust, our hope in you and you alone, oh God? Would you just bless every person who's tuning in today and who's listening in today? I pray a blessing be upon them in the name of Jesus, oh God. Would you just illuminate our hearts and minds and grant us insights to the power of the Holy Spirit this evening? Pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's read once again the verses 12 that we just read about. And in another place, Isaiah said, the heir to David's throne will come and he will rule over the Gentiles. They will place their hope on him. And for this, we need to go back to the beginning. A quick recap of what things happened. You and me all know what happened in the Garden of Eden. Mankind plunged into sin because of disobedience. But God had a redemptive plan right there in the Garden of Eden to redeem mankind. And if you look at this amazing book of the Bible, it gives you enough evidence of the fact on the redemptive plan of God right from the beginning. And the hope that he has given you and me, which is anchored on his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brethren, if you take a look at it, fast forward many years from the time away, Adam, You'll find God choose one man, Abraham. And because Abraham believed in God, it was credited to him as his righteousness. And God made a covenant to him. He, he told him that his descendants would be as, the, as many as the stars in the sky. And he said, through you, many nations will be blessed. Amen. Here we are talking about fast forward many years later. If you look at in Ephesians chapter 3, you will find Paul talking about the big mystery has been revealed. Both Jews and Gentile alike will share in the inheritance and the blessings in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. What an amazing thing. Church, for you and me, isn't this amazing that God gave us this opportunity to be included, to be included in his kingdom? Amen. The goodness of the Lord, that we have this hope. When many others are feeling hopeless today, many others are in despair and confusion, are overwhelmed. Today we stand here, our faith deeply rooted and anchored in the almighty living God. Amen. The great mystery was revealed. My dear brethren, that is our hope. In fact, you know, if you look at the early church, the Gentile mission is to prove that God always had this redemptive plan. He chose Israel as a holy nation to be an example, to be the shining light to all the Gentiles. All the Gentile nations. Of course, you read through all through the Bible. They had their own share of obedience and disobedience. The cycle continued. But God had this redemption plan to include Gentiles and Jews alike so that none may perish but have eternal life, the hope of eternal life in Christ Jesus. My dear brethren, I want to just, and that's a Christian hope. And our Christian hope is all about that we believe that the Lord Jesus is going to return. And you and me will be included in his eternal plan, in the eternity, in, the, in our eternal destiny. As we move forward in verses 13, as I read about here, I said, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. And I'm going to just pause here. In verses 13 of the scripture that we just read, he said, I pray. Here's Paul saying, I pray that God, the source of hope. I want to ask you today, what is your source of hope? In many ways, the definition of hope differs from people and person to person. Many people today, you could see that, have put their hopes in different kinds of things. Some have placed their hopes in the riches. Some have placed their hopes in the retirement plan. Some have placed their hopes in the investment portfolios. 
their possessions, their connections, their, their, their brothers and sisters. They place the hopes on people in, in high, high capacities and in, in high positions. Some have placed the hope in the diet plan and fitness plans. But my dear friends, hasn't this pandemic given us new perspectives? Somebody once said this, experience is the best teacher. I disagree. It's only evaluated experience that becomes the best teacher. And I hope this pandemic season, I don't know what you're going through and what your experience is. Maybe some of us here put our hopes in the wrong things. We put our hopes in the perishable. And we know that in the season of pandemic, many of us have gone through tough times. Right? We have experienced people losing jobs. We have experienced people losing their loved ones. We have experienced people going bankrupt or on the verge of bankruptcy. There's a lot of hopelessness in the air. But in the midst of all of this, let me ask you your, this question to you. What is your hope? The Bible tells us here when, when Paul is addressing to the Romans, says, I pray that God, the source of hope, so he, let he alone be your source of hope in this season. But this pandemic has proven no matter how rich you are, no matter how wealthy you are, how connected you are, how educated you are, how, how affluent you are, none of these things mattered in this season of pandemic because we learn we cannot put the faith in these perishable, in these things that's going to pass away, but we have to put our faith in much bigger, in it, that is having, it's more eternal. That is more everlasting and that is putting a faith and hope and trust in the one and only one living God in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you during this pandemic season, I want to let you know that this is a time if you find yourself, your faith being shaken, if you find yourself on shaky ground, you find yourself nervous with anxiety attacks, stressed out, let me tell you, Turn yourself unto God and let the God of the source of all hope fill your hearts with peace and joy. Amen. That's what the scripture says here. Let him fill you with joy and peace. I'm not going to talk much about joy and peace because my brethren are going to talk about it in the coming devotions about joy and peace. But let me stick around to the theme of our topic today, which is hope. And I hope that this Christmas season, we realign our perspectives, we realign our priorities to a hope in Christ Jesus. Amen? And let's read it further. In verses 13, it says, Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here he's trying to talk about saying that, May you overflow with the confident hope with, through the power of the Holy Spirit. My question to you today is, how are you feeling today? Are you feeling the overflowing confidence of your hope that is through the power of the Holy Spirit? Some of us have good days and bad days. Some days we really fall short. When we take eyes off from the Lord and tries to take, put our eyes onto the world or anything else that doesn't matter, we might stand at the risk of finding ourselves on shaky ground. My dear friends, as I stand here, let me tell you one thing. Our Christian hope is in the everlasting. During this season of pandemic, we have seen many people losing their loved ones. But for me, even in the season when I have... I've seen recently some funeral services online. And I can say that when one of the funeral services, here's a son who was weeping in the, in, in the funeral service after his mother was late to rest. And people are watching him online on Facebook. He comes online and encourages the people that, you know, even though I mourn my mom's death, we are okay. Because one thing we are confident about it is when the trumpet sounds, we're going to see our mom once again. And that is our confident hope. Amen. This, you could see even in the midst of the trying times, here's a son testifying in front of an audience 
through Facebook saying that you could see he was overflowing with the confident hope that comes from the Holy Spirit. And that overflowing hope can only be experienced if you have the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know, my friends, what is your situation? It reminds me of the parable of the one who built his house on the rock. When the rains came and hit hard, when the winds came and hit, the waves came and hit, the house stood strong because it was built on a rock. But on the other side, you could see the foolish man who built his house on the sand, put his hopes on things of the world. When the rain and the winds came, it couldn't stand and it fell. So what is your hope that you're centered on? And let this message, let God speak to you today that you may be able to realign your priorities today by putting your hope and have that overflowing confidence that when people look at you in the midst of your trouble and your trial, just like the world is going through a, a trial, everybody is in this trial that they may see there's something about that man, there's something about that lady, that when we see them even in the midst of trouble, there is that hopeful overconfidence that can be seen in the disposition and that can only come through the person of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. My dear friends, as we come to the close, I want to remind everybody about a beautiful passage of scripture that we can see. You know, if you look at the Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament, there's a gap of 400 long years that is called the year, 400 years of silence, when God never sent a prophet or a messenger to speak with his people. And in the 400 years in the land of Israel, a lot of things have changed. The Roman Empire had demonstrated their dominance in that region. Israel became a Roman colony. They were oppressed. The freedom was taken away. There was a gloomy atmosphere in the, in the air. There was an atmosphere of sadness in the air, just like what we're feeling today, even though there is Christmas, we're not able to see that, that joyfulness at that point of time. Let me tell you one thing, and that's the time in Luke chapter 1, after John the Baptist, the forerunner, was born, Zechariah, his father, says a beautiful prayer, and he starts to pray by thanking the Lord that he sent his son, Jesus, as a savior. Hallelujah. He sent his son as a savior. In the lineage of David, just like what we read again in Romans chapter 15, right? In the lineage of David, as promised. And he fulfilled the covenant he gave to Abraham. The covenant that through you many nations will be blessed. Amen. And that the covenant was going to be fulfilled. And then he goes on to read in verses 79 uh, and 78 and 79. I will read that for everyone is to be encouraged today. And the word 78 and 79 it says, Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace. Amen and amen. My dear brothers, as we conclude this session today, I want to encourage all of you. If you're listening in for the first time or if you happen to be tuning in and you don't have the relationship with the Lord Jesus, today is a perfect opportunity for you to welcome the Lord Jesus in your life. All that you have to do is ask forgiveness for your sins and invite him into your life. And may the Lord fill you, the source of hope, fill you with that overconfident hope and fill you with the peace and joy that you have never experienced before. And for the rest of us who are here, who have the relationship with the Lord, it's Christmas. It's the best time of the year for you to extend a gift to all the people who are in, living in hopelessness and despair today with the gift of Jesus Christ, who is our only eternal hope. God bless you. Amen and amen. Let's take a moment to pray. Father, we thank you so much for this precious moments you've given to us, God. We pray, Lord Father, for you to move powerfully in our midst. 
Every person who's watching and tuning in today, every family that is represented, would you fill each one, O oh God, because we know you're the source of hope, that you may fill each one, O oh God, with the peace and the joy, God, the peace that transcended all understanding. And let the joy of the Lord be the strength of God. And in this season, of God, help us to have the right perspective about Christmas. It's not just about the festivities in the air. It's about the personhood of Jesus Christ, the relationship that we have, the hope that we have through Him, of God. And let may we be filled with the overconfident hope, of God, so that no matter what we face in life, whether it's, whether it's a pandemic, whether it's a depression, a recession, it's a calamity, O God, no matter what season we go through, whether we find ourselves on top of the mountain or in the valley, help us to be putting our faith and let our faith be anchored in our everlasting hope that is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. This we ask in the most holy name of Jesus. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. God bless you.